final city council meeting that will ever be held in this building. Um, we're happy to see so many people here this evening. If you would, please take a minute and check your cell phone and make sure that you have placed it on silent or vibrate. Um, and then we are also this evening, once again, uh, providing remote access. So we welcome members of the public who are participating remotely. To that end, people, we will ask everyone participating remotely to place their microphone on mute during the meeting with the exception of any public hearing. At the appropriate point in the public hearing, I will invite the public to unmute their microphone for purposes of submitting any comments that they wish to make one person at a time. All persons wishing to make public comments will be asked to first state their name and address for the record. And if they're completing the comment, members of the public will once again be asked to place their microphone on mute. And we thank all of you for your cooperation with us this evening. With that, please join us in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mrs. DeMaid? Here. Mr. Hazen? Here. Mr. Camalenti? <coughs> Here. Mr. Bidnicki? Here. Mr. Emmons? Here. Mr. Belovich? Here. Mr. Compton? Here. Mrs. Volker? Here. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Here. Approval of the minutes of our regular meeting of September 6, 2022. Are there any additions or corrections? Then hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as received from the clerk's office. Petitions, communications, remonstrance, and memorial. Yes, Mr. President, I have a letter from the City Plan Commission regarding their recommendations from their September 13th, 2022 meeting. Honorable members, a regular meeting of the Mishawaka Plan Commission was held on the above reference date, at which time the following proposed ordinances were considered. Petition number 22-14, a petition submitted by Anthony Ricano, requesting to rezone vacant land south of 4601 Grape Road from C2 Shopping Center Commercial District to S1 Extensive Open Space and Public Use District <coughs> due to being located within the floodplain. The commission with a vote of 6 to 0 recommended approval. Petition number 22-15, a petition submitted by Thomas McLaughlin, Corey Smith, and Aaron Cor Corcoran requesting to vacate the east-west alley between 515 Clay Street and 804 Wilson Boulevard. The commission with a vote of 6 to 0 recommended approval. Pursuant to Indiana Code 36-7-605, the Mishawaka Plan Commission hereby certifies to the Mishawaka Common Council the attached proposed ordinances regarding the above matter. This is signed by Carrie Myers, Administrative Planner. <coughs> All right. And with that, we will move into a special event on the agenda this evening, the swearing in of the Mayor's Youth Council. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, council members, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, as you said, uh, this, these are the last uh, times we will meet in these chambers. It's a very bittersweet uh, moment for, mm -hmm. for me, uh, having worked uh, in some way in these chambers for well over 20 years. Um, but uh, I think that uh, we need bigger chambers and help <laughs> is on the way. Uh, but anyway, uh, I also find that uh, it's highly appropriate that this is the last swearing in that I will do, we will do in these chambers, and I can't think of a better group of people than our future to swear in right here. Uh, and so uh, we're here to swear in what uh, I consider to be uh, my most important initiative um, that we've had, uh, at least at as long as I've been mayor here. This is our 12th class, our 12th youth council of the city of Mishawaka. And um, these kids uh, are highly exceptional leaders. After they uh, have come through this program, they achieve at the highest levels, kids of all walks from all three of our area high schools and beyond actually, uh, from Mishawaka High School from Marion High School and from Penn High School. These are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who uh, give up their own time to help us <coughs> make Mishawaka a better place for them. And so one of the things I find um, as I travel around, one of the things that I love to do more than anything in this job is to go into schools and to talk to students, whether it is 
from kindergarten all the way through college about what it is that local government does. The most vital services that any government anywhere can provide are provided at the local level of government. And so it's these services that, uh, quite frankly, are necessities of life or that uh, really impact the quality of life. And it's these services I find that just, they don't get taught. This level of government does not get taught anywhere, uh, typically in any school at, at, at any level. And so that's why we started this, to educate specifically about local government, to do some community service, and to um, have these future leaders step up and be leaders themselves right now to make this community better. Um, you know about this program. Uh, I, I come here every year. We have some new faces in here who may not know about it, but uh, we ask a lot of our youth council members. We ask them to show up, to be prompt, to dress uh, you know, in business casual. We ask them to come out of their shell, to get to know students, and to contribute to meetings. Uh, we feed them pretty well, uh, but um, we, uh, we have seen these kids do remarkable things here. Uh, we have, just as an example, uh, all of the branches of the United States military um, have members of the Mishawaka Mayor's Youth Council serving in their academies. We have uh, police and fire uh, uh, candidates who have served in this youth council. We have uh, a priest who is in the Vatican or studying to be a priest who is serving in the Vatican right now come through this youth council. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate in particular is that we have staff members right here at the city of Mishawaka who have gone through this uh, youth council and may not have been here providing service now for the future, except for maybe it was that spark that was planted in them uh, at the Youth Council. And uh, you look around town, you don't have to look very far to see the contributions that they've made. Heroes Park, completely conceived, designed, implemented by the Mayor's Youth Council, one of the most popular parks in the city of Mishawaka. Award-winning, uh, the best project in the state of, Indi of Indiana last year. Uh, that was entirely done by the Youth Council. We just finished it up this year with the new basketball courts. And finally, the trail lights that were on order for two years are in and about to be installed. So that's almost done. Um, last year, the Youth Council got to design their own space in the new City Hall. And so that is coming along quite nicely. That will be the future meeting space for the Youth Council, as well as a community room for our citizens. Uh, this year, I have an extra special project uh, that they're going to learn about that they will get to design. It'll be um, a high-profile project, very visible, and will be there uh, for generations. You know, these kids will go off. They'll chase their dreams. Uh, they'll go far and wide. They'll go pursue, uh, whether it's their education or wherever. But eventually, we hope that they consider coming back to Mishawaka to realize their dreams, and we see where a lot of kids do. We see where kids maintain connections that they wouldn't have had except for this program. We've seen kids start dating because of this program, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but uh, it is uh, a program that uh, is run by volunteers, which also makes it special. And so I want to uh, thank some of the volunteers who give up their personal time to do this, uh, my assistant Lou Ann Hazen, who really does a great job of getting out all the notices and uh, orchestrating everything, probably most importantly the food, uh, <laughs> and uh, my wife Jamie, who uh, this is partly uh, her uh, passion as well, and uh, as a uh, as an organizer and, and kind of founder of this. Uh, Deb Gregg, my uh, uh, receptionist in office. Uh, and this is also a bittersweet year for me because this will be the last class where I will have had a kid of my own go through it. Uh, <laughs> they've all grown up, and uh, this will, will be the last of my own flock to come through. But uh, uh, we treat this as a government body. We will swear them in tonight, essentially the same oath that I swear, that you swear, all of our department managers swear in on. 
we will swear in on the same Bible that I swear in, all of our police and fire swear in on. Uh, this is what I call our family Bible, and I can't think of a more appropriate uh, Bible to use for our youth council. Um, we'll get them going. They'll learn the Roberts Rules of Order. They will pick their own leaders. They will elect their own president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and they'll run these meetings like you run yours and learn a little bit about government. This year we also will be uh, doing some special trips. Uh, not only will we get through all of our uh, city departments over the next uh, year to two years, uh, we'll make it hands-on for them, we'll put them in full gear, down to the fire department, electric department, you name it, they'll get to drive some heavy equipment, uh, hopefully. Um, Pat's in the back, he's probably, hold your ears on that one, our attorney. Uh, we're gonna let them drive some heavy equipment occasionally. Um, we will, uh, <clears throat> they will be uh, starting pretty immediately to uh, gather donations, contributions, uh, and gifts for our food drive, Thanksgiving food drive, where the, they have, uh, they will distribute Thanksgiving meals to Mishawaka's uh, less fortunate. Uh, we've distributed thousands over the course of the last 12 years. We've had over 200 youth council members who are out there in and around our community and, and frankly around the world serving. And then we, uh, this year, we'll have an opportunity. This program is a best practice, recognized as the best practice around the state of Indiana. Our kids come back with, uh, comp after competing for um, awards, grants to make our community better. They typically win. Um, and so a lot of communities in Indiana and around the Midwest have called and said, hey, we want to model your program. So we know that it's a best practice, but they uh, get to go down to Bloomington uh, here in uh, the next couple of months to be with other youth councils from around the state, a great opportunity to share with kids, their peers, uh, and try to improve uh, you know, their community and sometimes get to learn about things that they might not otherwise know or learn about. We'll have the opportunity uh, first part of the year to go down to the state house on legislative day we'll take a group down with us to learn about state government they'll get to learn they'll get to meet with their state reps state senators maybe even the governor who knows we have uh, had that opportunity in the past um, but they'll get to see state government in action uh, and it's a uh, an education that that is uh, I, I think very uh, outstanding and we will uh, maybe this year have a couple of extra speakers and also get them out into the community to you know, take a deeper dive about what's, you know, what's here in Mishawaka making up their community. So that's what uh, we have uh, in order. These kids couldn't be more proud of them, um, but uh, you know, I am especially proud of their parents. This is a commitment that goes uh, beyond the students. It is an entire family commitment. So I wanna thank all of the family members who are here today for allowing your students to serve. Um, I think it's uh, uh, something you should be very proud of because they will absolutely leave a mark on this community that you will get to see, that they will get to see, and their kids and grandkids will get to see. So that I can promise you. Um, so with that, I think we will get started. I will call them up individually, uh, hand them their oath and their pen, um, then we will swear them in once we are all up here. So, you can hand these down. All right, Ava Fox. <coughs> Not here. Audrey Wandling. Bella Schatzel. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 you know, take the directions from your wife like you're supposed to. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Congratulations. I was spaced out. Congratulations. Uh, Bella is not here. All right. Brady Fisher. Delaney Duval. Okay. 
Elena Wright. Jan Spiesjack. I hope I got that somewhat close to right. Yeah, just got to slide all the way down. Perfect. There you go. Isaac Prince. Jackson Horvath. James Bubby Wood. He's the only 12-year member. He used to be the mascot. And now he's an official. Congratulations. He's an official youth council member. Josie Nidbosky. Joel Coquit. The Mboski. You got all the way down to the end. Perfect. Yeah. Just keep going. There's room. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Congratulations. The best dressed man in the chambers tonight, Luke Von Turnow. Nicholas Froke. Congratulations. Nishargo Prashan. Patricia Kirk. Patrick Anderson. Patrick DeKeever. Reagan Sutherland. Will Shalio. And Wilson Wright. All right. Okay, are we ready? <coughs>
Sure. Just more for you. to be on the youth council. <laughs> and then they have little pictures of each individual high school out in, in the foyer area here, and then you always get a copy of that. But we'll start with your name first, if you don't see all the folks out. Can you go a little bit? Okay. Usually at this point I say anybody who wants to leave and uh, go out the hallway can leave, but I think people got the message already, so. Yeah. All right, before we move on, many thanks to Mayor Wood, Mrs. Wood, Mrs. Hazen, and Ms. Gregg for the work that they do, and congratulations to all our incoming Mayor's Youth Council members, and we look forward to seeing what they accomplish over the course of the next year. And with that, we will move into report of special committee, of which we have none this evening. Ordinances on first reading. Proposed ordinance number 2022-30 an ordinance amending chapter 137 of the municipal code of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, as from time to time amended, commonly known as the zoning ordinance of 1966 of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana. This is to rezone from C2 shopping center to S1 extensive open space to remain a natural open space due to floodplain, south of 4601 Grape Road. Proposed ordinance number 2022-30 will be assigned to the land use planning committee. Proposed ordinance number 2022-31, an ordinance amending chapter 137 of the municipal code of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, is from time to time amended, commonly known as the zoning ordinance of 1966 of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana. This is vacation of public right-of-way for first alley between lots 44, 45, 46, and 47, Battelle's second park edition. Proposed ordinance number 2022-31 will be assigned to the land use planning committee. Proposed ordinance number 2022-32. This is the civil city budget and tax levy for 2023. Proposed ordinance number 2022-32 will be assigned to the budget and finance committee. Proposed ordinance number 2022-33, an ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Mishawaka, chapter 62, article three, water service, and approving the offering of a water service line warranty program to customers of the Mishawaka municipal utilities. Proposed ordinance number 2022-33 will be assigned to the Public Improvements Committee. Yes, we have a Public Improvements Committee, folks. <laughs> Who's on it? <laughs> You're the chair. <laughs> Resolutions. I wonder if people want to get signed. 
We have resolution 2022-21, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, Indiana, making a final determination and con confirming the designation of areas within the City of Mishawaka, Indiana, commonly known as 2754 Lincoln Way East and adjacent parcels as an economic re revitalization area and economic development target area for the purposes of real property tax abatement for Barack Group LLC and or ITS assigns. Thank you. We will now open the public hearing on proposed resolution 2022-21. Good evening, Mr. Spear. Good evening, <coughs> President, members of the council. I'm Derek Spear, city planner. Office is located at second floor here at City Hall. Um, as was previously referenced when you guys considered this two weeks ago, um, the developer, um, who is the Barack Group, is proposing to renovate and convert the existing Mishawaka Inn at 2754 Lincoln Way East into a 47 to 60 unit multifamily residential apartment building. The second phase is anticipated to include a new building, which would include another 46 to 50 units, which would result in 93 to 110 new units on the four acre site. Total investment, including the acquisition of the property, is estimated at seven to eight million dollars. Um, the first phase of the construction is expected to begin next year, and the second phase in the second quarter of 2024. Um, the proposal is a five-year abatement. Um, it's a little bit higher than the normal um, annual abatement schedule. So this one's proposed starting at 100% and then um, degrading or declining 5% annually over the five-year life of the abatement. Um, this abatement schedule is identical to the one that was uh, um, submitted for the River Rock Apartments on Mishawaka Avenue and the one that was approved for the River Walk um, project, um, which was never constructed north of the river and west of uh, Central Park. Accurately predicting the values um, and the tax impacts for any abatement quest is usually a, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, there's a lot, it's an, an assumption. It's very uh, uh, assumption laden. So the best thing that we can do is use the Department of Local Government Finance has an online calculator. And what we do is we input the location and the assessed valuation and the class of the property and then it will output the maximum tax um, bill, anticipated tax bill for the property. So when we use this calculator, we use the current tax rates. We use an estimated assessed valuation of $1.3 million for phase one and $4.1 million for phase two. So that would have an annual tax bill estimated of $31,000 for phase one and $96,000 for phase two. And how we came up with the assessed valuations is we used an estimate of 80% of the construction value. So that could be a little bit high. It's anticipated that it'll probably be lower than that. So these, these estimates as far as the taxes paid over the life of the, the abatement and abated are likely on the high side. So looking at the analysis um, for, the, for the life of the abatement, <coughs> we have calculated that the taxes paid on the increased investment would be approximately $64,000 and the taxes abated would be uh, approximately $575,000. So that's in line with the other residential abatements that were, were approved that were previously, uh, that were previously referenced. And um, Mike Huber is here with the, that's representing Barack. So if you have any specific questions on the actual um, project, he'd be happy to answer them. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Spear, Mr. Benigni? Yes, Mr. Spear. Um, the way this shows they're going to pay zero taxes, that, that's not right, is it? No, 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 no. Over the life. It says zero taxes paid year one is zero. Oh, that would be because, so th because of the 100% abatement. That's, that's the, in, on the increase of the. Of the uh, on the increase, in, so the they're increase. still going to have correct, to base. correct, 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 correct. This so, is, I mean, that's a little deceiving. Correct, correct. You can correct. look at that and say, well, they're not even paying yeah. a penny. Well, it's that's it's, it's the increase on the abatement. Can you abatement. can you tell me what the taxes are on it today? It's about um, it's two percent is the cap for the for the uh, the rental. I think there's a um, there's an exempt. Maybe it's by two point three. So right now the property values I think um, are around six hundred thousand. So it's about twelve to thirteen thousand dollars a year is what the property taxes are. Okay, and then even on the uh, phase two, mm -hmm. now that's that's vacant property. There's still a value to that property before it's built. Correct. So there, there's still a value. So it's not zero. It really there is something. Correct. Correct. And there's more than one parcel here. So there, there's actually the main parcel that the hotel sits on. So there's three separate parcels here. So it would affect all those parcels. Two of them just have land value on them. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Spear? Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? If so, please come forward. 
Hi, good evening. Mike Huber, Evan March Consultants, 315 West Jefferson Boulevard, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, here representing Barack Group. Uh, Mr. Nina Davis is, I believe, on the line, uh, attending virtually as well, uh, in case there are some questions that uh, I might not be able to address that he can, he can also uh, address. I think Derek did a great job of outlining the property. We were here a couple of weeks ago. Um, just wanted to reiterate um, the, just kind of go over some of the, what we think some of the timeline uh, questions might be. And uh, I think Derek, Derek covered the financials. Remind you, currently the property is paying about 13,000. Um, we think even after phase one, we're gonna see over close to 200% increase in that property tax going into what the new proper, what the new project will um, generate. Uh, the amount of the abatement actually accounts to about uh, just under 10% or so of the total project costs. So if you think about the investment that Mr. Davison's making in the project, we understand, I, I would put this uh, as an underutilized and underperforming to be generous for the project, uh, for the property as it is right now. Um, the level of investment that's being projected for this site, um, I think is a significant win for the city and over the long term, um, when we're talking about something that represents about 10% of the project costs, um, I realize it's a lot of the first five years worth of taxes, but um, long term, this is going to generate a, a lot of revenue, a lot more than the current state um, for the city uh, in the future. Also, it's a very highly visible property, um, and uh, and you'll see some savings in the lack of public sa safety calls that'll have to go to that building as well. Um, and it'll it'll really, I think, along with the other improvements we're seeing in the corridor with the, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts and the Wendy's, it can help transform that gateway. A little bit. Um, additionally, it's building. It's bringing another 100 to 110 housing units. We understand that northern Indiana, this part of the country right now, we've got a little bit of a housing crunch. We think this market for this, uh, it's a market rate program project. However, the units are a little on the smaller side, so we think the rents are going to be not luxury, kind of lower than what we see with a lot of the luxury apartments. So we think it's going to serve a part of the market that's currently maybe outpriced in some of the in the housing neighborhood uh, cost values. Uh, it'll be a nice attractive piece for a lot of those and it's a housing type I think we need more of even if mortgage rates um, just continue to go high I think that's going to continue uh, rental housing pressures and and so this is a project that can certainly uh, help fill that get that gap as well so um, <clears throat> in terms of timeline um, the the uh, developer has has closed on the property and is in the process currently of a lot of the pre-development work. He's hired engineers, he's hired architects. They're in the building, they're doing analyses. They're trying to determine what the right layouts are, what the right mix is. That's why when we say 47 to 60, we don't know what that is yet. Um, we, we've got to understand the systems a little bit fully. Um, but we anticipate pulling permits for the construction for the first phase of the project uh, in spring of 2023. And then we anticipate about a 12 to 18 month construction schedule depending on supply chain issues and delivery of supplies and those kinds of things. Um, and then we would follow up probably, you know, four to six months after that with pre-development starting on the second building phase two, um, and then another 12 to 18 months beyond that for construction of that. So we're probably looking at a late 2023, early 2024 start on phase two of the building. I wanna note the uh, abatement periods for these projects wouldn't actually start until the permits are secured. So if they never secure any permits for either phase, then there's never any abatement associated with those. So there's not a risk from the city in terms of giving tax abatement on anything that's currently being paid, uh, as was mentioned earlier, because they are currently paying taxes. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. And I don't know if there's other, I think John Pierce may want to make some comments. <coughs> All right, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Huber? Yeah. Mrs. Volker. Thank you. Hi. I was not here a couple weeks ago, so if this is repetitive, I apologize. But can you remind me um, the square footage of the apartments? Yeah, so um, I think what they're looking at in terms of what they've got right now is uh, they, the current existing hotel rooms, which I think are in the three to 400 square foot range. Um, that would be a studio. They put a kitchen in and it'd be a studio apartment. Um, what bedrooms would be basically two of those? And two bedrooms would be three of those. So they so are hoping to come correct, combine correct. some and of that's them. why okay. it's a 90 room now, and that's why the full build out's gonna be somewhere between the 47 and 60, depending on what that unit mix actually looks like. It's not gonna be 90, 300 square foot unit studio apartments. Right, least. nope. Okay, and then do you, have, you don't have any idea about what <coughs> studio, what the rent 
Yeah, I think that right now, just with from pre preliminary performance, we're looking probably 800 for the studios up to about 1100 for the two, three bedrooms, something in that range. Okay. So again, not at the high end, something that's a little more um, market rate, but at the low end of the market rate. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Huber? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? Please come forward. You got the Bible up there. I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> John Pericini, 633 Windy Cove Court. I'm with Coldwell Banker Commercial Real Estate. Um, I'm pretty proud to be part of this project. Uh, the, the administration, Derek and Ken, have just been great to work with. It's been a long, long process. You know, I've had this for sale for a long time for the seller, um, probably six, seven years. It's, I know it's easy to give an abatement for something that's going to create 50 or 60 jobs and, you know, manufacturing something. So these are unique. But I think, and I live on this end of town and drive by this many times, and it's nice to see this opportunity there. I don't think, I think Tony's mentioned it on his campaign trail, that was the number one subject, it probably still is, and I can't imagine anybody in the area would be against it. Um, you know, the, some of the things, and I'll try to make this quick, but like, there, it could easily be bought and then just left like it is and fix it up. Because when you change it from an extended stay to an apartment, you have to put, you got to sprinkler it. That is a substantial, we've had meetings with the fire marshal, we've been through what we've done through all this, and that's in a substantial cost. So you're seeing this, some things you don't really see that enter the building and to get it to where it needs to be to make it a nice product is, is expensive. And so I think it helps because this end of town hasn't had a lot of housing growth besides the south. So it's going to spur 100 and some units. And Kate, to answer yours, there is some units already with the door. You know, you see those adjoining units in mm -hmm. most hotels. There's, a, there's some of those in there already. And they've had the um, a structural engineer in there to see, you know, that they can add some of those on to, you know, where they, it's not going to be a big opening, but it would be an opening to get in there. So I think he, uh, Mr. Davison, like I said, he's already, he bought it, he's committed. I can't imagine the cost he has in engineering and architect now, because we've been on this a long time. So he's committed to it. So I appreciate your support and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Cheney, Mr. Hazen? John, how many have you, just in the three years I've been involved, there's been at least, 10 people look at it, different investors? And yeah, there's been quite a few um, and just never made the numbers work. And even some of the bottom feeders, as I call them, for lack of better terms, walked away from um, because they probably wrestled with the cost to get it even to where that's at. It would have been, the syphilis would have been to buy it and <coughs> as coined Ken's phrase, lipstick on a pig, we didn't, that's what we were trying to avoid. So that's really basically either to gut it out. And we were fortunate Dunkin' Donuts had really turned that site down about three times, and so did Wendy's. But then with the pandemic kind of brought this heavy demand for drive throughs so it made it like a supply and demand thing, so we were fortunate to land the Dunkin' on that site too. So. I, just, I, I want to say one thing publicly, because I've talked to John many times about this property, and there was a few people that probably would have bought it, left it the same, because it was making some money, and he kind of steered them away from that, because he knew that's not what the right. city wanted in that so i appreciate that and it did take you a lot longer to get somebody but i think i, think I didn't this the owner that wanted to close it and i told him not to yeah. because i felt that at least it was generating something and if it got closed then all of a sudden we'd be fighting an even worse issue and i said no you got to keep this thing you know at least people here and <clears throat> keep a lot of the distraction away you know i know it's a lot anyway but <laughs> to minimize it <laughs> so <clears throat> Mr. Benicki. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piercini. A um, couple things. First of all, thank you for work on this. I mean, that's really going to beautify that area. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I happen to know someone that's lived there for over 10 years, and she was quite surprised when they actually reduced her rent already. So that, that was well uh, received. And then also the ability for some of these folks that have nowhere to go, that they're going to be able to stay there during some of the construction. If it gets too bad, they may be relocated for a short period of time. But some of these people call that home and have for a long right. time. So it's it's. He's been it's good. what He's they can afford. Sensitive. He doesn't want. That's we, that's been a sensitive issue. 
you don't want to be accused of running people out of their homes. And I mean, there might be a point where utilities get shut off the chance for something or they just can't stay anymore because of construction. But he's been working with them like that situation, you know, because a lot of them left when they heard the word because it was down to about 20 people in there when, you know, as the media, as it got out to the public that it was going to get sold, a lot of people started taking off. So it might that might have been a blessing in this size because it might make it easier for the transition because, you know, that's the last thing you want to do. So, OK, thank you. Thank you. Any Thank you. other questions for Mr. Piercini? I have one, uh, sir. The, there was a statement in the staff report that was really well written, I thought, that jumped out at me. It, it indicates that um, it's important when looking at these type of projects uh, to look at uh, the opportunities to redevelop underperforming commercial structures to continue to pave the way for future investment. Based upon your experience and your knowledge of commercial development, would you agree with that statement that this is not only good for this particular property, but it supports further economic development in that stretch of Mishawaka on yeah. into the future? Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, first, when you think about the roof, they bring, I call them the rooftops, but you bring a hundred and some people to live there to you know, shop around the area. And, you know, we've had, actually, the restaurants there have kind of struggled. Barnaby's hasn't opened, Applebee's closed. You know, a lot of them have come and gone. And so now you kind of feed to support that and any of the retail there. And then I think it helps um, even that East End area, as you see that commitment in dollars, um, it just it seems to, you know, funnel in, in a lot of different ways. Even the side of the, even the main, I mean, it doesn't have a lot of employees, but when you think about maintaining 100 and some apartments, you know, you're going to paint them, you're going to carpet them. You're, I mean, it generates income, just the intangibles that you don't see as far as 10 or 15 employees. You know, the maintenance of the outside, snow plot, whatever it may be. So I, it's, it's got to be a huge plus for because that thing has been tough. You know, it's been kind of blighted. So, you know, there's, it, it's, I agree with 100%. It's got to be a big plus for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a major, major commitment. I mean, look at downtown. I mean, let's face it, 25 years ago downtown, Oh, different animal, you know, and just it's one, next, next, and it just keeps going. And you, you wonder if it's going to keep going, and it just keeps going, you know. But I think it's a spurred up, you know, by uh, you know, you build it, they come kind of theory, you know. So, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Pierchini? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? If so, please come forward. Mr. President. Council members, Dave Wood Mayor, I just want to uh, be on record as supporting uh, this resolution. And uh, as you know, property ta or tax abatements in general are very rare in the city of Mishawaka. I can't even remember the last one we've done. It's done. It's been a couple of years ago. R uh, abatement for um, for housing projects are even more rare. And we try to make sure that uh, we go through them on the administrative side to make sure that uh, they're the right fit for the city. Uh, we think that this one is the right fit for the city. Uh, as you know, we have uh, been looking for stability on this site for a long time now, and we think that this particular uh, project provides that stability. I also uh, think it's important to remind uh, people, not necessarily you, but uh, this isn't the city handing out cash. Uh, this is phased in new improvements. This is an abatement on the phased in new improvements. So while it doesn't necessarily cost us anything up front, uh, it is a phased <coughs> in benefit incentive to the builders uh, and it allows them to um, you know, have a little bit more stability. As we all know, building costs, even since, uh, you know, this project was conceived, have gone, uh, you know, pretty crazy, actually. So uh, we um, think that this is warranted because of the increased costs of doing a project such as this. It is, as I mentioned, uh, an incentive based, phased in on the improvements. But ultimately, over time, will benefit the city in a, in a big way by not only providing a stable site, stable project, uh, allowing for some economic growth around there, but also uh, the tax 
revenue generated long term should be much significantly improved over what it has been in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mayor Wood? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? Please come forward. Then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? Is there anyone here in the chambers this evening who wishes to speak in opposition? Please come forward. And is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition? Hearing no one, are there any council members who wish to speak? Mr. Hazen. Yeah, I just want to repeat what Mr. Pericini said. Uh, three years ago when I was out campaigning, this by far was the number one issue with everyone I talked to and continues to be one of the top priorities that they want something done with the old LHN. Um, the way I look at it, maybe I don't look at the numbers, right? But if you look at 13,000 in taxes over five years, it comes out to 65,000. They're saying we're going to get, we're going to make 64 anyways. It's, it's a no cost to us to get rid of an eyesore, like the mayor said, something that should clean it up tremendously, especially with Capitol Avenue right there. So I will be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Compton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I thought a lot about this, talked to some of the council members, talked to community members. Um, I'm not going to be able to support this. I think um, I thought a lot about this. And Mr. Spear made a comment that and, com and compared the abatements to other residential abatements we, are give we have given. And I appreciate that. That was... It was a good comment. Uh, it showed the council that we're not doing anything outside of what we haven't done before. But I think we're setting a precedent. And I think we've got at least two, uh, if I'm right, two more apartment com uh, uh, projects coming to our community. And I can almost guarantee they will be asking for this because this is what we've done. And it becomes a standard. And that's what I caution the council on future abatements, I want this to be successful. I think that Tony, uh, Mr. Hazen is correct, that this is, a, 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 I want this to be successful, but I struggle with tax abatements on, um, on apartment projects. We've given um, two. One of the projects didn't go forward, one of them did. A third project, there was some state money that went in it that made it successful. So we didn't have to give an abatement. I struggle with this. In my mind, this is not what abatements are for. Abatements are for jobs. And, and I just don't, I, I can appreciate what Mr. what Mr. Pericini said. I agree that there will be construction and maintenance jobs on these apartments in the future. Um, that's where I stand. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Memolenti. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank uh, Mr. Hazen and Mr. Compton for their uh, comments and regards um, uh, pertaining to this project. I want to thank Mr. Piercini and, and everybody else involved in, in uh, putting this, this project in motion. Um, just kind of to piggyback on Mr. Compton's uh, comments, um, you know, I don't think it is a standard, at least in my opinion, or how I view abatements. I know. Uh, as a council in a city, we, we, we tend to look at these and scrutinize abatements and not hand them out uh, very easily. So when I make this decision, uh, personal reflection that I do is, uh, is it going to bring bring stable, high-paying jobs to, uh, to, uh, to keep an, a, a business, um, to attract businesses to the area? And I also look at it as revitalizing um, certain areas, underdeveloped areas, and I think that this project um, as Mr. Piercini had mentioned, has been for sale for six, seven years. I don't think anybody that, that I've talked to uh, from the resident side of things are happy with, with the way that uh, building looks and how our first responders have been called to that location several times. Um, I think it's time that something needs to be done, and I think in order to, to get that done, if it takes a, a, a minor tax abatement, that we'll get the return on investment very quickly, as Mr. Hazen had mentioned. Um, I'm all for it, so I will be in support of that this evening. Thank you. Mr. Benicki. Thank you, Mr. President. 
A um, couple things that I hope happen here. One is that we use a lot of local labor. Uh, let's get our neighbors working, whether it's in the renovations of the, this, whatever. Um, we, we need to make sure local people work. Don't be shipping people from out of town and the money leaving town. Uh, the other thing is stiff management of this building. We've had other apartments, you know, the 100 Center, where it's like the, the inmates were running the asylum. We've got to make sure that whoever runs this runs it with a stiff fist. If there's violations by, by people, they got to go. And I hope that, you know, we, we, we shouldn't have to force them to, to enforce these things. But this thing could go south in a hurry. If, if all of a sudden, you know, the rents are low, so we're bringing somebody in, somebody rents the apartment, well then, you know, Aunt Ed is moving in and Uncle Ed, you know, all of a sudden there's 10 people in an apartment, that ain't going to work. So I hope that whoever manages this, obviously somebody will locally, that we don't turn this into some place where the police have to have somebody on site 24-7 a day. So with that being said, I will support it at this time. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the council? Mr. Evans. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Even though this project is not in my district, but I do travel that area, and a number of times people have come to me and asked me what's going to happen out there. Why hasn't the city done something to incorporate that area, make it productive, make it viable, make it something substantial to where it's proud to be there? It's been like that for a number of years where nothing has been done, and it's, not a, it's a blight to me, to the city. So if we have a time, chance to improve that area for something that will benefit not only people, but also the area. <clears throat> so I'll be in favor of supporting this ordinance. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Well, as always, I appreciate the thoughtful comments uh, on the part of my colleagues. and. I don't mind uh, stating for the record that, uh, in concept, I agree <laughs> with everything that Mr. Compton said. Um, I don't recall in my time on the council having ever voted in favor of a residential facility receiving a, a tax abatement of this type. The prior uh, abatements that are approved were in between terms for me. And um, I would have some concerns about voting in favor of this but for uh, the information that's been provided to us this evening in, in the prior public hearing, and then uh, integrating that into an analysis of the law, one of the things that we have to find in order to grant a tax abatement is that the area itself is undesirable for or impossible of normal development and occupancy. And I think we've heard this evening about the extended time that the market turned its nose up at this property and investors ran away from it when they found what the cost of development would be. So the fact that we have somebody who is willing to step up at this time on this particular piece of property is a distinguishing factor in my mind. Um, as has been said, this has been an eyesore uh, for low these many years. And not too long ago, if you would have told me that someone was willing to step up and invest as much as $8 million on this particular piece of property, I would have questioned it. So I'm, I'm pleased that a high quality development has, has been uh, placed in front of us. Looks like it's going to occur. Um, I think it's important that the time frame that has been embedded in this abatement be complied with. This isn't an unlimited opportunity to sit on this site and not develop it three years starts to click fairly quickly here. So it's got to be done. This can't be like what happened across the river in, uh, on Mishawak Avenue. But uh, with that proviso about the limited time frame, with the prospect of the investment of as much as $8 million being uh, invested in this particular site, on balance I find that as the law requires, the totality of the benefits here is sufficient to justify this abatement. So I will be voting in favor of this as well this evening. Are there any other questions or comments from the council? Hearing none, then I call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. Demade? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? No. <clears throat> no. Ms. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Yes. The resolution passes eight to one.
Resolution R 2022-22 as amended. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka adopting a plan for distribution of the proceeds of the City of Mishawaka's grant from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Thank you. And I we'll, don't think that as amended should be on there, so. We will now open the public hearing on proposed resolution 2022-22 as <coughs> amended. Um, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed resolution, if you would, please come forward. Although I think I'll kick it off with some comments since the council was intimately involved in the preparation of this document. Um, and then I'll perhaps ask Mr. Mamaletti to uh, chime in as well. The resolution in front of us this evening really is a next step in the process that we initiated, oh, going on uh, almost two years ago. Now uh, we're at the stage where the special committee that the council put together has had a chance to take a look at the request for funding by various entities in the community. And this resolution, along with the companion uh, appropriations ordinance that also will appear on the agenda later on this evening, sets the stage for us to be able to actually distribute some grants and subsidies to a list of uh, community partners. Um, before I turn things over to Mr. Ramaletti, just for the record and for the benefit of the public, the projects that are uh, embedded in the resolution and uh, proposed for funding are Boys and Girls Club, United Way, and Head Start, uh, one roof project in the amount of $750,000. Youth Services Bureau in the amount of $375,000. Troop Town in the amount of $325,000. Mishawaka Building Trades Program in the amount of $275,000. The Mishawaka Penn Harris Public Library in the amount of $50,000. And the Res in the amount of $35,000. So um, this has been a collaborative process between not only the council, but the administration, and we appreciate their participation as well. Um, before I turn things over to Mr. Mamaloni, I wanna thank all the applicants. Um, we had a larger group who submitted applications. Unfortunately, we weren't able to fall, fund all of them, but all of them had merit to them, and hopefully they will move forward in the community, perhaps with a different type of support from uh, government and other resources. I also wanna thank uh, the controller, Becky McGuire, our financial consultants at Baker and & Tilly, and our uh, council attorney, uh, Mike Triple, for their assistance in putting this together. And I also wanna thank the uh, special committee that we formed, chaired by Mr. Mamalenti, and uh, also consisting of Mr. Compton and Mrs. Volker. They did an uh, admirable job of vetting the projects and really taking a hard look at making sure that we are um, spending this money in a responsible way. The last point I'll make before I turn it over to Mr. Ramaletti is, in addition to setting the stage for recipients to receive the amounts that I indicated earlier, this also Im uh, embeds within our resolution and within the receipt of this money, some accountability. There is a, a, a grant agreement that the individual recipients will be asked to execute. There's a reporting component of that so that we can make sure that we're being good stewards and that the people who receive this money are being good stewards of this once in a generation opportunity to do good in Mishawaka in ways that we would not have been able to do absent the receipt of this funding. So um, I appreciate the work of all involved. Mr. Mamalenti, do you have anything to add before I open it up? I do. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And uh, I'm going to echo kind of some of your thanks as well. Um, but before I thank my, uh, uh, the members, uh, Mr. Compton and Ms. Volker, um, I want to thank the council as well. It's always been our committee's um, uh, mission to have this a uh, kind of a collaborative um, discussion with the council. I, I made a promise early on that everybody would at least have a voice um, in this decision, um, and I thank everybody for doing that as well. Um, just want kind of want to echo uh, President Hicks and Ball's thanks. I want to thank the mayor and staff for for uh, the help in this, Mr. Prince, uh, Mrs. McGuire, and the uh, the financial consultants, and uh, I know Mr. Uh, Mr. Triple and Mr. Hicksonball um, did a lot of a lot of work on the back end um, from the paperwork and composing um, a lot of the literature and, and legal documents. So I appreciate uh, the help on that as well. And also do want to say thanks, special thanks again to all the applicants. Um, it was a very difficult decision, um, and unfortunately, we had a certain amount of funds that we could 
to give. And I think, and I, I rec recollect our early discussion once this committee was formed, I think what a, as a committee we wanted to reach as many people um, within the city uh, as quickly and widely as we could try to make a real impact on the city and the residents. Um, and I'm extremely proud of the applicants that, uh, that are receiving um, funds or pot potentially receiving funds this evening, depending on the vote. Um, I think we, we did a great job um, in terms of capturing exactly what we set out to do, try to make an impact as, as soon as possible um, to as many people uh, from the city of Mishawaka as we can. And I wanna say um, that we've even expounded upon that as well. We've, we've with some of these programs, um, with one roof, we've started from the infants to the grave. So everybody is included, um, not necessarily our initial um, reach wanted to be with the, uh, the teens and the um, underprivileged children in the, in the city. I think we've done a great job with our applicants um, reaching as many people as possible. So again, I will um, thank everybody that was involved uh, making that decision. <coughs> um, thank you for the applicants for everything that you guys do in the community to help our, our residents, um, our veterans, our, our young children, our elderly, everybody that's in need of it. So I think that we, we really hit the mark, hit the target on this one um, with, the, uh, with the recipients this evening. <coughs> so I wanna thank everybody involved and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys, getting the updates um, uh, uh, annually, biannually, whatever we set up. But I, I really look forward to hearing the progress and, and seeing the lives changed based upon um, what you guys can do. So thank you all for that. Thank you, Mr. Mamaletti. And with that, uh, let's invite to the podium anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution. If you would, please come forward and begin by stating your name and address for the record. Don't everybody rush up here all at one time. Mm -hmm. Bob Schreiner, 519 Miami Club Court. Uh, I am the treasurer for the preservation of the res, and I want to thank you on behalf of the res for the monies that we can receive from this. Uh, like me, the buildings are getting older out there, and <laughs> it, it takes a lot of money to keep them up to date and do so without having to raise what we charge people who utilize them. Uh, I did notice one of the young men on the youth counselor who was, signed, who was sworn in earlier is a Boy Scout and he's doing a project there right now. And it's good that we can keep those things going. And I thank you all very much for this donation to us. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Schreiner? Thank you, Bob. Hi, Jacqueline Cronk, um, Boys and Girls Club CEO, 502 East Temple Street, South Bend. Um, on behalf of the Boys and Girls Club and Head Start and United Way, we are ecstatic um, just about this opportunity and this investment in our kids and our future. And uh, we can assure you that we will work diligently to put your investment to good work and that we can hopefully see kids running these hallways of this building in the not too um, distant future and uh, that the lasting impact of that investment will be felt uh, throughout Mishawaka for a long time to come. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? Thank you. Chris Elmerick, 1202 Lincoln Way East, Mishawaka. Mishawaka Building Trades, the school city of Mishawaka. We are just ecstatic and thank you all very much. Uh, from the mayor uh, presenting uh, and, and Mr. Prince with presenting the home to us at 324 uh, East Mishawaka Avenue um, and then to be able to have funds to actually complete the home and start our renovation uh, projects that we're wanting to do with our students uh, to start expanding uh, not just doing new construction but doing the the rehabs uh, this is phenomenal and this is uh, just an, an incredible opportunity our students are already out there uh, doing some of the demolition uh, part of it that doesn't really cost much money so uh, <laughs> so we're excited uh, we'd love for you to stop by we're there in the mornings uh, right now um, between 8 and 11 
um, that were out there. And so if any of you would love to stop by and see the project uh, at its beginning, um, we'd love to have you out there and show you around. Um, we will be um, doing a new construction project up in the Habitat neighborhood as well. So that'll be starting here within the next week or so. So if we aren't out there, you'll know why. Um, but, uh, but again, uh, on behalf of all of us at School City of Mishawaka and Mishawaka High School in our Building Trades program, thank you all very, very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Questions or comments from Council? Just Mr. A, Emmons. Just a comment. Could you give the address again of what you're doing? Uh, 1202 Lincoln Way East. What is it? Oh, for the house the that we're working on, 324 <clears throat> East Mishawaka Avenue, right next to the old Burns Reynolds <laughs> building. I'm sure Woody just wants to bring you donuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those boys will accept me. <laughs> <laughs> we do have seven football players. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Mrs. Volker. Hi. Thank you so much. Um, I am particularly excited about this because we, as the Historic Commission, started talking with uh, Mishawaka Building Trades almost a year and a half, two years ago, about the possibility of putting a program together to start rehabbing our old housing stock in the city of Mishawaka with the hopes of um, revitalizing neighborhoods in another way. Um, and I also thought, our Historic Commission also thought that it would be great for the students that are involved in the program to not only have the um, knowledge of um, building new homes, but most of us live in old homes that need repair. And uh, I thought that it would be great skills for um, your students to have um, as they go forward. We're really hoping that this, um, that this donation will allow the building trades to expand into other um, compromised parts of our city um, and making impact for many years to come. Um, and I'm really excited about the opportunity. Also, the Historic Commission is very interested in coming out to volunteer and um, hope that we're going to be able to help with some, with some other aspects of the home uh, at 324 East Mishawaka Avenue. So. We definitely welcome that. Thank yeah, you so much. Thanks. Super. And we look forward. And and as as Kate was saying too, is this is just our startup. It's the it's kind of the seed money to this program to just kind of kickstart it. It just so happened there was a house that was available um, that the city was able to partner with us and and hand over that was kind of one that you know we were looking at homes to purchase in the areas that we had uh, originally discussed. And uh, so it was kind of a, a, sh a little bit of a shift of, of where we were going to uh, place the funds first. But with the sale of that home, we'll be able to continue uh, to look at some other uh, homes in the areas we originally discussed um, to continue. And, and we definitely want it to be a sustainable program, just as our new construction has been. So again, thank you. Yes. I have a soft spot for this program as a former industrial arts teacher. I want this program to succeed. And earlier on, I used to sub at Mishawaka High School in the building trades program. So I got firsthand knowledge of what they did when they were building new homes. <clears throat> I've never been with them when they had a remodeling project, but I'm very proud of the homes that they built in the past. And my sister-in-law lives in one of them. And that, so the program means a lot to me, and I hope it succeeds, and I hope with this donation it really helps you. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the council? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? No, it's well. <coughs> Good evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Christina McGovern, Director of Development, Youth Service Bureau of St. Joseph County, 2222 Lincoln Way West. Um, I just want to say thank you to the council for all your due diligence. I know this was not an easy job by any means and I think we've seen a theme this evening from the way we started out the with the youth council and with all the investment that you're looking at this is truly going to be transformational for young people in our community and the need um, for our services unfortunately continues to grow and this building is going to be life-changing for so many and for all of our communities as a whole so thank you thank you any questions or comments from the council? Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Jim Method, Mitchell Troop Town. From myself and the entire team, we wanted to express our gratitude and thanks for 
approving our request for the funds. Um, if you've traveled down Jefferson lately, you've seen that we've removed all the trees. The funds that we received from the city will allow us to continue with the demolition this fall. We've already contacted the city of Mishawaka fire chief. They're gonna conduct training in the buildings before we do the demolition. We hope to have them down before Veterans Day with all the ground prepped so we can start construction in the spring. Everything is coming right along. Um, I, I know, understand that Deb shared the new site plan mm -hmm. with the council two weeks ago that's already been approved by the um, engineering department, the fire marshal, everything. So truly everything is right in line with where we wanna be. We'll continue our fundraising efforts and next, next spring, it's gonna begin. So our deepest thank you, truly thank you with, for everything. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? And thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Ben Modlin, 1202 Lincoln Way, Mishawaka, Indiana. Um, I just would love to commend the council for, uh, for all of these wonderful programs uh, with this ARPA funds um, that we're supporting. Uh, as me as a parent, I have children in the <coughs> Boys and Girls Club, and me as a teacher, I have students that really benefit from a lot of these programs, and my wife loves the library, uh, so, <laughs> and I have many family members that are, that are uh, veterans, So, uh, and um, we are foster parents as well, so the Youth Services Bureau, I mean, this is just a wonderful way to, to reach out into our community and just really to invest in, and to grow it. Um, so thank you very much. I, I really, really, really am very appreciative of all of these um, groups that we are funding and, and moving forward with. So thank you kindly. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions or comments for Mr. Modlin? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? Please come forward. Then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor? <coughs> Is there anyone in attendance this evening who wishes to speak in opposition? Please come forward. And is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition? Are there any council members who wish to speak? Mr. Compton. I'll let her present go first. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just wanted to add a couple comments that I didn't have an opportunity to in, uh, in my opening. Um, I just want to thank everybody too for uh, on the council standpoint for their patience and also the applicant i know this uh it, it was a long process um it was a labor of love but i think the committee wanted to get this right instead of rushing it so i do uh, in, in that sense i want to apologize that it may have taken a little bit longer than we originally hoped but i think as I mentioned before, and after hearing the folks come up and speak of the recipients, I, I just can't reiterate the fact that we, I think we, we hit the mark on this one. I mean, um, yeah, in every aspect, as Mr. Modlin had mentioned, um, we are investing in our youth and our future of the city of Mishawaka and, uh, and those that have served as well. So um, can't thank everybody enough. Thank you for uh, the patience. It's been a labor of love, and uh, I can't wait to see this thing rolling. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Compton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, echoing on what Mr. Mamalenti said, um, I too, you, you know, I got a little <clears throat> frustrated. It didn't move along like, you know, but when we're dealing with uh, funds from the federal government, <clears throat> Um, and that's where this came from, was from the federal government. There are hurdles, there is reporting, there is regulation, um, that it, it, it seemed to hold things up. Um, and I'm, I'm a person who, you know, let's get this moving, let's roll, let's, we got people who are looking for this income, um, you know, let's, let's move it on. But we did have to do it and take our time, as Mr. Mamalenti said, do it right, cross our T's, dot our I's, we didn't want to come back later and say, oops. Um, but um, with all of the groups that we chose to support, um, as I remember, the three of us talked about housing and youth. And I think we uh, covered quite a bit of that uh, in, in what we're doing. Um, these are things that are going to carry on 
well into the future uh, in our community. I'm very, there's some things you get to do um, as, a, as a city councilman, most of it's small stuff, but there's some things you occasionally get to do that, that have a long-term effect, and, and I think this is one of them. So I wanna, on one hand, I wanna, uh, I wanna thank our federal government, whoever that might be, that, that this is available to us, uh, and, and I wanna thank um, our mayor and our council for the way we chose to uh, to distribute the funds, because I think uh, I think we it, it did good. It will do good long into the future for the community, as I said. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Compton. Other questions or comments, Mr. Benicki. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to thank Mr. Manmalenti, Mr. Compton, and Mrs. Volker for their hard work. <clears throat> also, want to thank the mayor and the administration uh, for for working uh, to make sure that that we were doing the right things here. Uh, also want to just congratulate all the organizations that were awarded today. Um, there were a lot of them that we weren't able to help, but each and every one of these will make a difference in, in this area, uh, whether it's directly in my neighborhood or somebody else's neighborhood. I mean, these are all positive things that, you know, God willing, it's really gonna improve things. And, and it's not that these folks came, you know, looking for certain dollars and things like that. Everybody wants more, everybody wants more, but you know what, they are so appreciative of whether it was a dollar or more. I mean, and, and that's the good part is to be able to help folks that really, really, really need it. So uh, I just wanna congratulate everybody and say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benicki. Any other questions or comments? Then again, thank you uh, to everyone involved in the process. Congratulations to the recipients. Hopefully, this will not be the last time we see you. Maybe this will be the last time we see you in this location, <laughs> but we look forward to hearing from you as your project rolls out. As, we, as I touched on earlier, there's gonna be some reporting and some legalese that goes along with it, but most of you are already adept at that. But please uh, consider yourselves to have an open invitation to step up with the microphone in the new City Hall and provide us an update um, at our council meetings as you see fit. So thank you again to everybody involved. And if there are no other questions or comments from the council, then I will call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? <coughs> Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Bidicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksabaugh? Yes. The resolution passes 9-2-0. Ordinances on second reading. Proposed ordinance number 2022-27, an ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Mishawaka, Sewer Department, and the Teamsters Local Union number 364, amending the collective bargaining agreement expiring on the 31st day of December 2024. Thank you, Mayor. We have the committee report, please. Yes, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your committee on personnel to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2022-27 report that they have examined said matter and their opinion should be adopted. This is signed by the entire committee and I move for its acceptance. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the committee report. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We'll now move into second reading of public hearing on proposed ordinance 2022-27. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? If you would, please come forward to the podium. Good evening, Mr. President and members of the council. My name is Tom Dolly. I live at 1701 Bennington Drive, Mishawaka, and I'm the department manager for uh, sewer maintenance with the city of Mishawaka. And uh, I'm in favor of this amendment uh, due to the fact that the laws have changed on uh, obtaining CDL licensing. And uh, we've got a couple of young guys that uh, we hired and uh, in order to um, uh, once they get into our department, we, we give them 90 days probationary period, and that's for us to look at their work and uh, for them to obtain a CDL if they don't have one. And even though their work might be good enough to continue, if they don't have that CDL license within 90 days, our contract or their contract states that we, they have to be terminated. We can give them an extension 
but we can only give them, whether it's 30 or 60 or 90 days, we can only give them one extension. And uh, the city was in the process when this amendment was drawn to uh, 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 teaching a couple of our guys in the street department, uh, getting them specialized training in order to train other employees in the city, no matter what department they come from. Um, and apparently there were, I believe there were six employees uh, from various departments. And I had two gentlemen in my, my department that are part of that Teamsters contract that needed to get that to class. And at the time that this was drawn up, the class wasn't finalized yet. We didn't know that we thought they'd expire, which they did. Their time expired and we, we put them, uh, uh, we gave them an extension, but we discovered that we can't give them an indefinite uh, extension for an entire year. We didn't know how long it would take for them to do a class or for, we would get our guys certified in order to train our own guys. And uh, so this was needed when it was drawn up and uh, we do have the class. The class was approved and the city was certified to train other employees. We've got our guys go through the class. They all passed the class uh, and uh, one of the of my two guys went on to obtain a CDL license last week. So I've got one guy left and uh, it could take this gentleman could, he could go take the CDL test and fail. And then it's up to him to retake it as many times as he's allowed to retake it at his cost. And he has up to a year to get that license. And at that point, then uh, we would have to part ways. We would have given him a year or so. Uh, so I'm in favor of this and I, I appreciate your consideration in this matter. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Dolly? Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? If so, please come forward. And is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition? And is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition? Are there any council members who wish to speak? Hearing none, then I call for the question. Question. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbach? Yes. Those <clears throat> ordinance passes 9 to 0. Proposed ordinance number 2022-28, an ordinance approving an agreement to the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Mishawaka and the Mishawaka Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge 91. Thank you. May we have a committee report, please? Yes, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your committee on personnel to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2022-28 report that they have examined said matter and that in their opinion it should be adopted. This is signed by the entire committee and I move for its acceptance. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the committee report. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We will now open the second reading and public hearing on proposed ordinance 2022-28. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, please come forward to the podium. Chief Nowacki. Good evening. Um, my name is Craig Nowacki. I'm Assistant Chief of Mishawaka Police Department. Uh, address 200 North Church Street, at least for the uh, next two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with this, it's a contract language change incorporating uh, ERT, which is new, the emergency response team. So we'll be able to have those procedures in our contract as far as it goes with utilizing them, activating them, and getting them on scene. Uh, it was uh, unanimously voted on by the FOP as well as uh, being approved by the city attorney um, as well as the Board of Public Works. Thank you. Any questions for Chief Nowacki? Mrs. Volker. Hi, thank you. Hi, Chief. It's good to Hi. see you. I just have a, can you give an example of when you might need to do this? If you have maybe a, a state of emergency in the city, whether it's a, a shooting, uh, any occasion where we're going to need to get officers in and get them in quick, and maybe we're not having the response from other overtime from officers responding to that, we have these people that they can be on call and we can get them in and activated. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the council? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Please come forward. 
Then is there anyone participating online who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance? And is there anyone participating online who wishes to speak in opposition? Are there any council members who wish to speak? Hearing none, then I call for the question. Question. Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Bolker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbach? Yes. Proposed ordinance passes 920. Proposed ordinance number 2022-29, an ordinance declaring an emergency and determining the expenditure of additional funds for the year ending December 31st, 2022. This is Additional funds for the ARP Coronavirus Local <coughs> Fiscal Recovery Grant in the amount of $1,810,000. Thank I you. We do have proof of publication. Thank you very much. The record will so reflect. May we have the committee report, please? Yes, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your Committee on Budget and Finance, to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2022 29, report that they have examined said matter and that, in their opinion, it should be adopted. This is signed by the entire committee, and I move for its acceptance. Second. second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the committee report. A committee report. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We will now open, move into second reading of public hearing on proposed ordinance 2022-29. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, if you would, please come forward to the podium. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. For the record, before Mr. Modlin resumes the podium, this is the companion piece to the resolution that was passed before. In order to comply with state law, we need to actually appropriate the money so the people who we congratulated earlier <laughs> actually can receive the money. So uh, that is where we're at with this proposed ordinance. And with that, the podium is yours, Mr. Modlin. Good evening again, uh, council members. My name is Ben Modlin. Uh, address is 1202 Lincoln Way. Mishawaka, Indiana. My offices are at Mishawaka High School. Um, I'm here in favor of this, and I, I really uh, ask forgiveness for the res for, for, for uh, not recognizing them earlier. Uh, as a former board member of the Mishawaka res, I, I sat down and thought, oh, no. Um, so um, again, all of these uh, wonderful uh, organizations um, will, will greatly, greatly benefit from, from, from our investment. So thank you very much, and I'm very much in favor of this. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Modlin? Mr. Yeah. Mamalante. Thank you, Mr. President. It's not a uh, question, but more of a comment. Um, I wish we could uh, give the res and, and the building trades extra money for being the only uh, ones that have stuck <laughs> around. <laughs> but, uh, but we cannot, but we thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think people were, they were the confused. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ben. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? If you would, please come forward. Then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Is there anyone physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance? And is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition? Are there any <coughs> council members who wish to speak? I will only add thanks to our controller, uh, Becky McGuire, who prepared this ordinance and made sure that we can actually spend the money. So thank you, Becky. <laughs> and with that, if there are no other questions or comments, I will call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Bolker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. Proposed ordinance passes 920. <laughs> Privilege of the floor. At this time, members of the public are invited to the podium to speak with respect to non agenda items only under Privilege of the Floor. Mr. President, Council Members Dave Wood, Mayor, uh, while we're on the topic of free government money tonight, I thought I would step up and give you a, an important update uh, of some news that uh, uh, just happened this afternoon. As you are aware of the Ready Grant program that the state of Indiana has made available using their <coughs> ARPA funding, uh, they provided uh, through competitive process $40 million to the local RDA, our regional RDA made up of Elkhart, St. Joseph, and Marshall counties. 
they began a process to uh, seek out uh, projects and to then go through and, um, and scrutinize them. Today, that culminated in an announcement of awards. The city of Mishawaka received $5 million for our athletic facility on the far north side. Awesome. Uh, we also received $200,000 award for George Wilson Park. And so we're uh, very pleased to uh, have uh, had our uh, considerations uh, taken very seriously and awarded. Uh, we did not get a couple of others, uh, but uh, we think that these projects here will make a big impact towards what the state of Indiana was trying to do, which is promote regionalism to attract people to our area. And so we have, uh, you know, some big work to do to put these uh, funds to good use. But I uh, uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, the city uh, did pretty well today uh, at the Ready uh, Awards. Thank you. Um, and thanks to you and everyone else involved in submitting those applications, filling out what I'm sure is onerous forms and <laughs> documentation in order to make that happen. So thank you very much. Any other questions for Mayor Wood? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. Real quick. I'm sorry. I just want to say congratulations. It's oh. a lot of hard work and really excited about the athletic fields in Wilson Park and, and looking forward to figuring out how to make the other ones happen. Well, big team effort for sure, as you know everything is. Uh, but uh, our, every good team has a captain, Captain Prince, sitting there back in the back. He's been uh, involved in that project, certainly working with uh, an operator that uh, – has been heavily involved, uh, as well as uh, Convention Visitors Bureau, uh, the um, state of Indiana got involved uh, with Innskeepers Tax. So just a real nice team effort all around. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else wishing to speak under privilege of the floor? If so, please come forward. Then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak under privilege of the floor? Hearing no one, we will move into unfinished business. Resolution R2022-17, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, Indiana, approving a petition of the Mishawaka Board of Zoning Appeals for the property located, located at 1017 East Jefferson Boulevard. Um, this is a use variance to allow food truck in the parking lot of Pilo's Body Shop, 1017 Jefferson Boulevard, and the petitioner has asked for a postponement until the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mr. Compton. Mr. President, I um, make a motion to honor our petitioner's request. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to postpone further public hearing on proposed uh, resolution 2022-17 until our next regularly scheduled council meeting, which will occur in the new city hall on Monday, October 3rd, 2022. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The matter passes unanimously and will be heard on Monday, October 3rd, 2022. And with that, we'll move into new business. Before we dispense with one uh, other action item, is there any other new business to come before the council this evening? Madam Clerk, why don't we uh, move into uh, the resolution, and after you read the title, if you want to go ahead and read the resolution as well, that would be appropriate. Resolution number R2022-23, a resolution of the Common Council and City Clerk of the City of Mishawaka, Indiana. Whereas the City of Mishawaka has conducted, conducted public business at the current City Hall located at 600 East 3rd Street, Mishawaka, Indiana since March of 1986. And whereas the regular meeting on September 19, 2022 will rep represent the last that the Common Council and the City, of Cl City Clerk of the City of Mishawaka will conduct a Council meeting in the current City Hall before mo moving to the new city, city Hall located in downtown Mishawaka. Whereas while the Common Council and City Clerk are excited by the prospect of better meeting the needs of the community following the move to the new City Hall, it is nevertheless appropriate to acknowledge the many contributions to the public to the public good that have occurred in the current City Hall. 
whereas the Common Council and City Clerk appreciate the participation in Council meetings by the numerous members of the public who have appeared before the Council in the current City Hall over the course of the time to exercise their rights as citizens, whereas the Common Council and City Clerk further wish to acknowledge the service of the citizens of Mishawaka that has been provided by the many City employees who have worked in the current City Hall over the course of time, whereas the Common Council and City Clerk further wish to honor the public service honor the public service by every, every elected and or appointed official who has worked diligently to promote the best interests of the community and the current City Hall over the course of time. Now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council and the City Clerk of the City of Mishawaka that heartfelt thanks are extended to all those individuals recognized above who have played a vital role in making Mishawaka a better place to live, work and play by virtue of their time spent in the current City Hall located at 600 East 3rd Street, Mishawaka, Indiana. Thank you. We'll now move into the public hearing proposed resolution 2022-23. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor, please come forward to the podium. You felt obligated, didn't you? Mr. President, <laughs> I, I do feel <coughs> obligated. And I can tell you, as excited we are to move, I'm equally sad, maybe even more so, to leave these chambers. This has been home for us for a long, long time. My entire existence in, in city government uh, this is just a welcoming place. Uh, it has always been that. Uh, and it's not the building that makes it that, although this has just been, like I said, home. It's the hundreds of public servants uh, and elected officials and volunteers that have made this building what it is. So as we move to the future of Mishawaka, uh, I'm confident that uh, we will see our best days ahead, not because of whatever building we will occupy, but the great team that uh, that that makes up these buildings that that occupies them. Um, this particular building is, you know, as as uh, quirky as it can be. Um, you know, I, I, I still get freaked out when I go into the controller's office because of all the heavy paper and the engineering <laughs> office that makes the floor bow. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, it creaks and groans a little bit. Uh, the classrooms are, um, you know, they're, they're quaint. They don't serve us very well. We've tried to reshuffle the, you know, the shells around here quite a lot over, uh, I know, my time and, and beyond. Uh, and we just can't make it serve the way we would want it to serve going forward. Uh, but this place will always hold a special place in my heart. Uh, glad that we have a productive use for it. Uh, and in fact, I think maybe even a better use for it. Uh, this will be a neighborhood center, likely in the heart of this neighborhood. And uh, once again, serving kids from Mishawaka and um, I, I can't think of a better use than that. And so uh, while we leave it, we're sad to see it go. Um, we know that uh, the life of this building will serve uh, for generations, hopefully to come for the city of Mishawaka and couldn't be more excited for that. And uh, just on, on, a, on a personal note, honored to sit up there with you uh, in the past uh, at, the, at the dais there and um, uh, again, we'll look forward to uh, the place may change, but the relationship hopefully stays the same and, and I'm, I'm positive and confident that it will. Thank you. Any <coughs> questions for Mayor Wood? Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor, please come forward. Debbie Ladega Block, Mishawaka City Clerk. Um, we moved into this building in March of 1986. Uh, I was uh, I was here for two weeks. I still was employed in the city clerk's office for two more weeks before I left and went to private business for six years before I came back to the city in 1992 as the elected city clerk. So I experienced the old building, which we've talked about many times. Um, it was more than time for us to leave. The heating and, and air conditioning, there was no air conditioning system. We had window air conditioners. We'd have to have the fire department come and pull them out of the windows every year so that we could close the windows and tape them shut so that the snow and the rain wouldn't be coming in in the winter. Um, so, but it was a great old building. We had the grand staircase. So that table that back there in the middle of the back wall there, that was at the top of the stairs with the bust of Lincoln, which we just found that in the basement. So 
Um, and that was donated by Christensen's. It doesn't have a year, but I started working there in 79, so you can imagine when it, <laughs> when it actually came. So um, I'm extremely excited about moving into the new city hall, state-of-the-art um, building, and it will be my third city hall. Um, and I think it's going to be a long time city hall, a lot longer than this building has, as have, we've used this building. Um, but I also like to just point out a few things. The little alcoves in the walls where we have the art, that was, this was actually the gymnasium slash cafeteria. But that's where the tables for the kids' lunches were. And they closed up into there so that they could play, um, play basketball and, and I'm sure several other kinds of sports. And if our esteemed former um, councilman John Gleisner were here, he could tell you many things about this building because he, he taught in this building. Um, so there's, there's, there's so much history here. My office is the principal's office, so I'm going to get the ruler out if anybody gets out of line. <laughs> um, the mayor's office was, was the nurse's office. Because that he has a little half bath, which is kind of an awkward thing for, you know, right in his office. Um, but that's because it was the nurse's office. So when you think about this building and you think back of all the people that have walked these halls, all the people that have sat in, in your seats, um, uh, only a few have sat in the seat over there. It's over, I'm I've been extremely blessed and fortunate. Um, but I'd like to thank you for doing this resolution. Greg, you did a great job writing it. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for staying here and listening to everything we had to say tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody want to ask the city clerk any questions before we let her sit down? <laughs> you know where you can find me? Good call. <laughs> At least until next week, next and then, week. Well, then right. you have to find, find me again. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution? Please come forward. Then is there anyone participating online who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone present this evening who wishes to speak in opposition? Mr. Modlin, anything that you want to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, and is there anyone participating online who wishes to speak in opposition? And are there any council members who wish to speak? I want to thank Debbie for her assistance in putting this together. Um, as the mayor said, it's, it, it is bittersweet. I think we're all excited by the move, but um, it, there are a lot of memories here. Um, over 20 years, I started to come, well, it was actually more than that. Mike Compton and I talked about playing basketball in this gym 100 years ago when we went to uh, Battelle Elementary School. And then I, uh, when I practiced law, I appeared before the council a couple times before I took office. So um, there are fond memories here, but the mayor is 100% correct. It's not about the building, it's about the people. And when you, Debbie mentioned John Gleisner, our, our friend and former colleague. When you think back to the Dottie Waynes and the mm -hmm. Primo Fontes and the John Peracchini's mm -hmm. and the Pete Rodiches and the Bill Pembertons and all the people who sat up here, it really brings back very pleasant many, memories for many of us. My own personal trip down memory lane uh, was reviewing the uh, resolution that was passed in 1986 when we moved from the former city hall. And it, uh, it brought a little tear to my eye when I saw that my uncle George Hicksonball was one of the councilmen at that point in time who uh, signed off on that resolution. So I take a little bit of uh, family pride in being part of this. So uh, it has been one of the great uh, pleasures of my life to serve with all of you in this building. I look forward to continuing to serve, serve with you as we move into the new facility. Um, and my hope is that um, the best of what we've done here will follow us downtown to Mishawaka and that we'll continue to do the good work that we do each and, time, each and every time we come together to represent the city to the best of our ability. So with that, if there are no other uh, questions or comments from the council, I will call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMaid? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. The resolution passes 9 to 0. Thank you, folks. With that, is there any other new business to come before the council? Yeah. Then hearing none, for the last time ever at 600 East 3rd Street in the Princess City, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. <laughs>